In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I'll be introducing the BMC Team Machine SLR01 to the magnificent Envy 6.7 tubular wheels very shortly. Now, I know many of you out there that follow the channel will be like, hang on a sec, I've seen photos of this combo before, I've seen you talking in front of camera with this combo before. What do you mean you're introducing the Envy 6.7 wheels to the BMC Team Machine? Well, I've actually never ridden the bike this way, despite the fact that I present it to you quite often, it just looks really good this way, but tomorrow I'll be racing on this combo and I'll be introducing the combination to myself. So what I thought I'd do in this video, explain to you a little bit about the MV 6.7 wheels because they are an interesting proposition and also what impact I think this combination will have or more so the wheels on the bike because while I love the BMC team machine, it does have a slight weakness and I think the MV 6.7 wheels are gonna complement. There's probably a couple of weaknesses that I'm gonna share with you. But before we get into the details of the video, I just wanted to apologize for my lack of content in February and possibly for the next week or two. Unfortunately, uh, one of my close family members has been quite unwell in recent weeks and to add further disappointment um, or emotion to the situation, uh, my grandfather, who I was very close with, his name's Stan Nichols, may he rest in peace, he passed away last Sunday. And um, as a result of that, it's been quite an emotional time for the family. Um, I've been heavily involved in the funeral organization and sorry, I didn't think I was gonna get emotional, funeral organization and all the logistics that go hand in hand with that. Um, so that's the reason for the absence in content. Some of you might be saying, well, why the hell is he making a video now? Today was my first day where I got to be home in front of my computer and do a few things and I just felt inspired to make a video this morning and as much as this video or making videos is about creating content for um, the YouTube audience, it's also something that I love doing, I've, I find it therapeutic. So this video, creating this video today is also uh, for my own mental health. So tomorrow I'll be racing for the first time since Melbourne to Warrnambool and while I've got a ton of family obligations and things to do over the weekend. I do have a dedicated time in the morning for me and I want to ensure that I keep doing things that are good for my health and things that help clear the head. And while videos is one of those things, so is racing my bike. And that's what I'll be doing tomorrow morning. So I will be heading down the highway to a race that is actually called a Kermis at this track. It's kind of like a big criterium really. And it's held by the Hamilton Wheelers Cycling Club here in Queensland. And the race will be on a motor raceway called Lakeside Park. The course is 2.3 kilometers in length. And it has some nasty little lumps in it. The race tomorrow will also be in reverse. I believe it's about an hour plus two laps with a hilltop finish. And thankfully the Lakeside track is only just over an hour's drive from where I live on the Sunshine Coast. So being close to this race, as opposed to the Melbourne to Warrnambool, is something that's putting me at a lot more ease and hopefully the lakeside track is something that I can get to a little more often. Now the reason why I never rode this combination leading into the Melbourne to Warrnambool or at the Melbourne to Warrnambool is because in training, and I was doing a lot of training, I use a set of training wheels and I use heavy tyres because I find that adds more resistance to the bike and I like adding more resistance to the bike particularly when you're participating in bunch rides. It makes your life a little bit more harder so you have to work harder in training and having some durable tires just means you're less likely to get flats when you're doing some big days out and for the Melbourne to Warner Balls doing some huge days and I hardly ever, or I don't think I got a flat at all. For race day, I wanted a set of lighter aerodynamic carbon wheels and that's why I chose the MV3.4s. Now I'm transitioning to Criterium Racing. These wheels make a lot more sense. So. Let me tell you a little bit more about the MV6.7 tubulars. These have a deeper profile rim to ensure I can hold my speed with greater ease given the aerodynamic nature of deeper profile rims. On the front you have a 60 millimeter depth rim and on the rear you have a 70 millimeter depth rim, hence the 6.7. The reason why it's a greater depth on the rear versus the front is just from a handling perspective, you can get pushed around in crosswinds with deeper profile rims and there's less weight on the front of the bike, obviously. Most of the weight is there. So it's much more preferred to have a deeper profile rim on the rear and a more shallower profile rim, albeit it's not a huge difference, on the front, 
just to help from a handling perspective and also helps reduce a little bit of weight. Now the tires that I have here are the Vittoria Corsa 25 millimeter tubulars, which means they're glued on. I know people go on about how good inner tubes for clinches are getting these days and also the rise of tubulous tires. So it's interesting, I popped into Omara Cycles a couple of weeks ago. This was after I DNF'd at the Melbourne to Warner Ball. I was speaking to Jay, the store owner. Now Jay is very respected in the bicycle industry. He's race bikes, he's got a family history in cycling, track cycling, you name it, and his opinion counts. And he said to me, why didn't you race with tubular tyres at the Melbourne to Warner Ball? I explained why, and he said, next time you race a bike race like that, or any race particularly, if you're gonna head into criteriums, make sure you're racing on tubulars. They are by far the fastest tire out there. And he raises a good point. I've ridden and raced on all sorts of tires now, tubulous, 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 clinches, etc. And I have to agree, when I get on these wheels and tire combination, it feels like the fastest combination possible. The reason being, they're one piece, they're lightweight and they tend to comply with the road bumps and divots in a much smoother way. And most pro cyclists choose them over anything else. So how are the MV6.7 wheels going to complement the BMC team machine? Two things that I wanted to talk to you about. First up is the frame. Now the BMC team machine, it is or it does have some aerodynamic features, but it's not an overly aerodynamic all-round race bike in comparison to other race bikes on the market like say the tarmac so having a set of deeper profile aerodynamic rims is going to help uplift its aerodynamic credentials and i think more importantly is i've talked about the bmc being a super soft and comfortable ride which it is you can ride this bike for 200 k's without any neck and shoulder lower back complaints just want to ride it all day long. One of the disadvantages of that is that it is quite soft in the rear. At times I actually look down and feel like I might have a flat tire, it's so soft. Now I don't actually know if that's taking away from the overall stiffness and aggressiveness that you tend to expect out of an all round race bike, but it certainly does make me feel that way. But by adding a set of super stiff aerodynamic race wheels like the MV6.7s, I feel like it's gonna help uplift the aggressiveness of this road bike, the stiffness, the acceleration out of the saddle, the ability to maintain speed. So time will tell, and I'll be able to share my experiences with you, no doubt, in the next video, which I said will be in a week or two's time. Before I go, the one thing that I am able to continue to work on in the background is my online course, because that's pretty much what I do to make money these days. It's the Road Cycling Academy up-level road cycling course. And I just want to let people know that um, there is two spots still available for February. If anyone wants to join, we start with a one-on-one -on -one call. You get access to 12 video tutorials, a podcast, downloadable worksheets, and also I'm building out a whole bunch of programs, 12-week programs in today's plan. Currently, there's three programs available. There's going to be five, six, or seven in the next month or so. So love to see you on the other side for anyone that's interested, and I'll catch everyone in the next video.